In this video, we'll talk about rubella virus. Rubella is also known as German measles. In a different video, we talked about what is measles. If you want to look at that video, click on the I button. So let's talk about the rubella virus and understand its structure. So it is spherical in shape, which is enveloped. And this envelope is derived from the host membrane. So basically the lipid component of the envelope is from the host membrane and it has glycoproteins which are generally known as E1 and E2 and it helps the virus to get into a host cell. Then there is nucleocapsid which protects the genomic material and it's a icosahedron uh, capsid. Now capsid has capsid proteins which kind of work like a case to hold the genomic material. Talking about genome, here the genome is basically a single-stranded RNA which is positive sense and roughly 9.8 kb in uh, overall size. Just to remind you where does uh, rubella virus fall in a classification? So they fall under the genus rubivirus and family Togaviridae. Let's talk about the epidemiology. So the reservoir of rubella virus is basically human. So human are the natural host. Transmission can occur via respiratory droplet which is common for measles which is common for mumps so these three uh, three infections mumps measles and rubella all can be transmitted via respiratory droplet but in case of rubella especially the infection can be transmitted vertically from mother to fetus and this is quite dangerous because it can cause uh, congenital rubella now the incubation period is 12 to 4, 21 days like any other viral infection and basically <coughs> it, there could be an uh, outbreak of rubella at any point of time. Now replication in, of rubella happens inside the nasopharynx and eventually in the regional lymph node. So here you can see the nasopharynx, the cells are getting affected. So net, let's zoom into one nasopharyngeal epithelial cell to understand the infection and the viral cycle. So here is the rubella virus which has the E1 and E2 protein which dock with specific cell surface receptors on the nasopharyngeal epithelial cells. And this binding lead to the fusion of the membranes of virus uh, envelope and the cell. That leads to the release of nucleocapsid in the cytosol. The nucleocapsid eventually release the ribonucleoprotein and eventually the RNA is freed. Since it's a positively strand RNA and it has mRNA-like features like the cap and the poly A tail, it can directly be transported to the ER and it can be used for protein production. Also, this would be eventually replicated to uh, pack more viruses. Anyway, the proteins that are produced are shipped via the Golgi apparatus and eventually on the surface of the cell, a new virus particle is assembled and then eventually released. So this is how the infection works. So first, the nasopharyngeal cells are affected, eventually lymph node are affected, then the virus might also enter the blood causing viremia. So let's talk about the pathogenesis in a bit detail. So first, the nasopharynx nasofer and lymph nodes are affected. Eventually, the virus enters the bloodstream causing viremia. And basically, it can affect several other tissues and organs, including the brain and liver. Basically, immune response against this virus is by humoral immune response, that means antibody-mediated response, or via um, cell-mediated immune response, which involves cytotoxic killer T cells. Let's talk about the clinical features. So in program phase, there could be mild fever, lymph adenopathy, that means sw uh, swelling of the lymph node, and eventually there could be uh, rashes. So the erythematous erythematous maculopapular rash can occur in the face first and spread throughout the trunk and the other body extremities and last over three to four days. There could be arthritis and other symptoms include mild conjunctivitis. So one of the biggest challenge with rubella is its vertical transmission from mother to the fetus via the placenta. Rubella can cross the placental barrier and affect the fetus. And the first trimester is the time point which is most vulnerable for rubella infection. So in the babies, there could be several problems due to rubella. There could be eye and cardiac abnormalities and also hearing loss. Also, there could be uh, dermal rashes which mimics uh, blueberry. So these, these are known as blueberry rashes. Here is the overall serology of rubella infection. So 
onset of the infection is kind of like marked by appearance of rash in the mouth and eventually spreading throughout the extremities then eventually the uh, body produces several antibodies like IgMs and IgG which help to resolve the infection and these can be detected in the blood as well so the diagnosis is depend on clinical history and basically clinical presentation the rashes basically the rubella antibodies the IgMs can be detected in the blood of the infected patient then PCR is a best diagnosis for any viral disease when it comes to treatment supportive treatment hydration and antipyretics might help to uh, control the thing sometimes vitamin A is given uh, hospitalization might not be required or might be required in severe cases the prevention is better than cure so this particular infection can be prevented by MMR vaccine every baby should be given this MMR vaccine and actually MMR vaccine has reduced the chances of mums, measles, and rubella several uh, times so I hope this video was useful if you like this video give it a quick thumbs up don't forget to like share and subscribe please support our channel using super thanks see you in next video